Easter's right around the corner. Maybe you're planning a family brunch. So here to help with some spring wine pairing suggestions is an expert sommelier, Theo Rutherford. How are you? I'm great, guys. Thanks for having me. How are you? Oh, we are excellent. Um, so first of all, I want to make sure that everybody knows that you started in very humble beginnings and look at you now. You were like a fry cook in a, in a sports bar, right? <laughs> you said you only knew wine was white, red, and pink. <laughs> that was my, yeah. Pretty much, and I knew that at that point, most people didn't like the pink one. So that's about, <laughs> that's about all I knew. <laughs> all right, so what do you have there? Well, for me, I really, when I'm thinking about brunch, I like to go to a farmer's market or a local bakery. I like to see what's fresh, see what sort of gets my, you know, gets my juices flowing. And that'll sort of inform what I want to do when, in terms of pairing. So obviously you can have your classic mimosa, which not a bad way to start a brunch, right? But I like to build my own mimosa bar, especially if I'm having a couple people over. That gives me an ability to pair different things and do put different fruit juices with that. And Josh Prosecco is an amazing way to go. And, and Theo, the, the price points on these wines are not ex extravagant. They're pretty, pretty good. Yeah, I mean, for me, I like to actually spend the money on the ingredients for the food just because I like cooking, frankly. So I like to spend less than $30. And the most expensive thing on here is actually going to be that bottle of whiskey at around $30. But obviously, one bottle of whiskey is going to get you a lot further than one bottle of wine. Exactly. So the wines are actually even lower than that. So I encourage people to you know, look at those values. There are really some great values out there, and you get some great bang for your buck. And like I said, you're able to spend that money on some really great quality ingredients to make your brunch menu. So you want to start with the mimosa, and then you move on to some special cocktails? Well, then you, I think then you move on to wine and then we can start moving on to cocktails after that. So once you've had your mimosa, you need something to sort of pad your stomach a little bit. We start going into bagels and lox or you go into eggs so that that way you can sort of keep things going a little bit longer. So I usually go into layer cake Sauvignon Blanc for the frittata that I've got or a rosé because especially as it's getting warmer, there's nothing better than a nice cool rosé in the summer or spring, especially Fleur de Paris. But then for cocktails, the great thing about brunch is it's a great excuse to make bacon. And every I will use any excuse to make bacon and eat bacon. And so for that, I have Redemption Whiskey. I know, I'm a carnivore at heart. It's great. Uh, but Redemption Whiskey is a great way to do that. And if you made your mimosa bar, you can actually repurpose those ingredients and put them into a whiskey cocktail. So that that way, once it starts you know, getting around the 4 o'clock hour and things start to get even more fun, that whiskey cocktail can come out and can help you digest that food that you've been eating for a couple hours. So it's a lot of fun there. Uh, Theo, do you pick your foods first and then the wine? Or do you pick your wine and then go with the food? You can kind of go either way, but typically I go food first. Okay. And the reason I go food first is it's going to inform the different flavors that I'm going to be working with. And the good news is on the back of pretty much every bottle, there's a cheat sheet for you. So if the back of the bottle reads like a list of ingredients that you're going to be using for your brunch, they're probably going to pair pretty well together. All right, so you want them to be similar. Okay, that's good to know. And do you, you say you talk about budgets. I mean, is there an idea of how much people should have to spend on brunch drinks? It's a great question. I really like making sure that I'm not spending too much. So for me, $30 is going to be the max that I'm going to spend. And that's usually going to be on that bottle of whiskey. And it's just because the bottle of whiskey is going to get me a little bit further than one bottle of wine. For the wines, it's going to be even less than that. And then I take what I would have spent on a really nice bottle somewhere else. And I put that into the ingredients for the brunch so that that way I have something that's really great seasonal, especially if there's a farmer's market, I'm supporting local farmers, anything along those lines just sort of makes it a little bit more fun. So yeah, $30 and below you're more than safe. Theo, have, have you measured your arms lately? And, <laughs> and just how big are they? <laughs> I've been really bored in quarantine. The only thing I've had to do is go to the gym. So I guess, <laughs> I, I guess I need to do more leg day. Is that what you're telling no, me? No, 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 you look great. Thank you so much for being with us, Theo. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot for having me. I appreciate it.